Hello, everyone. My name is Anna Curtin, and I am a recent graduate from the University of Texas at Austin. Today, I will be presenting on the quiet before the storm. Red howler monkey calls do not predict rain in Ecuador. The idea for this project came from Sylvie and Luciana, and, and with their support, I conducted this project as my undergraduate honors thesis in biology under the supervision of Dr. Tony DeFiori. Conspicuous animal behaviors that are easily observed by humans have the potential to shape the way that we view and interact with the environment around us. For instance, beavers modify the streams that we fish from, and the sound of blue jays always takes me back to summers spent at my grandparents' house. One famous example of a conspicuous animal behavior is the long-range vocalizations of howler monkeys, which can be heard almost up to a mile away. Here's an example of what these powerful calls sound like. There are multiple non-mutually exclusive functions of these calls, which include regulating space use and informing intergroup spacing to advertise the fighting ability of a group and in resource and mate defense. These functions can vary between species and even populations within a species. These howls shape the way that local people and researchers in howler monkey habitat view the environment around them. And one commonly shared idea in places where howler monkeys live is that their howls are associated with and can be used to predict incoming rain. This is an example of local ecological knowledge defined by Alves and Barboza 2018 as detailed knowledge of local biota and its implicit environmental cycles possessed by human communities that rely directly upon natural resources for subsistence. The degree to which local ecological knowledge and Western science support one another is largely unknown, but elucidating this has broad implications, including informing community resistance to climate change. We hypothesize that howler monkeys respond vocally to changes in ambient conditions or acoustic signals of coming weather, and that these vocalizations can be used to roughly predict in, in incoming rain. We predicted a significantly greater number of rain events that are preceded by howls than observed by chance. Data was collected at the Tiputini Biodiversity Station within the Yasuni Biosphere Reserve in Ecuador. The species native to this region is the red howler monkey, Aloata siniculus. We, we examined passive acoustic monitoring re recordings collected as a part of Sylvie's PhD project using audio moth and song meter devices that were left out in the field during July of 2016 and August of 2018. We visualized these re re recordings using spectrograms created with the software Audacity, such as the one shown here. Within the spectrograms, we looked for, for the unique acoustic signatures of howling, shown by the green arrow, and rain, shown by the blue arrow. Then we, we wrote down the start time of each of these events as they occurred throughout the day. A total of 50 days and 628 hours of audio files were analyzed. Looking at the onsets of howling and rain averaged across all 50 days, we see two things. First, the onsets of howling follow a bimodal distribution throughout the day, which lines up with previous literature that found that most calls were produced around dawn and dusk. Second, we see that rain onsets tend to peak in the early afternoon, right when howling onsets are at their lowest. But this is still looking at all the days summarized and obscures any relationships that are happening within each day individually. To get a better sense of this, we conducted a permutation test, which first involves calculating test statistics from, from our data. Because howls are produced in more context than only before rain arrives, we looked at two different test statistics. Shown here is an example of howling and rain events scattered throughout a day with the time windows that we use shown by the red arrows. The first test statistic counted how many calls occurred within a one hour time frame before each rain event. In total, we found four calls that came before rain. The second test statistic counted how many rain events occurred within a one hour time frame after each call event. In total, we found one rain event that followed howler calls. Next, we scrambled up our data and recalculated our test statistics on 1,000 randomized data sets. This allows us to see if the result of our data is significantly different than what you would see just by chance. Here is a visualization of the randomized of the distributions of the randomized data in gray and our observed data indicated by a red line. 
neither of the p-values for these permutation tests were significant, meaning that we did not see calls within one hour before rain or rain within one hour after each call event more often than you would expect just by random chance. Our hypothesis was not supported by our data, which indicates that howler monkey calls do not predict rain. So why might this idea that howler monkey calls predict rain still be common in an area where we didn't find evidence that backed up this relationship? First, howling and rain are both common events. And as we found, howling frequently happens in the morning and rain frequently starts in the afternoon. These two events might be associated with each other often enough by chance that people are still able to use howling as a general predictor to predict rain later on in the day. Second, the idea that howler monkey calls predict rain is widespread throughout howler monkey habitat, which includes multiple different habitat and climate types. As I mentioned previously, the functions of howls vary between different populations or in, in different species. And we only tested the relationship of howling and rain at one study site with one species. It could very well hold true for other species or at other sites. And it's possible that the idea that howler monkey calls predict rain has spread to areas where this relationship is not as strong. Lastly, previous studies testing the accuracy of zoological predictors of weather found that predicting weather based on the behavior of one species was only accurate when paired with other factors. More thorough information on the range of predictors used and the way that they are combined to predict weather using local ecological knowledge will show if there's anything that we're missing here. In summary, this preliminary study showed us that the idea that howler monkey calls are associated with and can be used to predict rain does not line up with, with what we found with Alawada siniculus at the Tibutini Biodiversity Station. However, we didn't look into the variable characteristics of rainstorms, such as the presence of thunder and the different intensities of rain that may produce a variable vocal response. Future studies could further clarify this relationship by accounting for these ca characteristics, as well as starting off with a more thorough knowledge of the nuances of local ecological knowledge used to predict weather and looking at different howler monkey species at different sites. Lastly, I would like to thank everyone who helped to make this project possible, and I would also like to extend my thanks to you for your time.